Hello guys, today I'll be talking about Cushing syndrome. So first of all, what is Cushing syndrome? It is signs and symptoms caused by too much cortisol, which is also known as glucocorticoids. And before we get into the details of Cushing syndrome, I would like to do a quick review on the hypothalamic, pituitary, and adrenal axis. So first, hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing hormone to stimulate the anterior pituitary to produce adrenal corticotropic hormone, ACTH which stimulates the adrenal cortex, especially the zona glomerulosa, to produce cortisol. And cortisol is the main glucocorticoid in the body. And cortisol, in turn, have a negative feedback on the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus, decreasing the ACTH and CRH level when cortisol level gets too high. And this is a really, really important concept to understand when, when, we are, when we are going to talk about the etiology of Cushing syndrome. So now, there are three main causes of Cushing syndrome. First of all, is First is aatrogenic, second, primary cushion syndrome, and third, secondary cushion syndrome. So first, aatrogenic, it is caused by prolonged glucocorticoid therapy. And there are many diseases that uh, this situation would be relevant to. For example, many autoimmune diseases need glucocorticoids to stop the immune system from attacking itself and reduce induce remission. So aatrogenic is actually the most common causes. And as a result of chronic glucocorticoid glucocorticoid therapy, there is decreased ACTH level due to the negative feedback. And also because of decreased ACTH, the adrenal gland are not producing as much cortisol as before. And therefore, this leads to bilateral adrenal atrophy. And second is the, are the primary cushion syndrome. And it is defined as the overproduction of cortisol by the adrenal gland, irrespective to the ACTH stimulation. So, as a result of this overproduction, there's a negative feedback on ACTH secretion, and that's why we can see there's a decreased ACTH level. And the possible causes are adrenal hyperplasia, adenoma, and carcinoma, although all, all, all these threes are relatively rare compared to the iatrogenic causes. And last, we have the secondary cushion syndrome, which is caused by increased ACTH, that increased stimulation of the adrenal gland, tending to increased production of cortisol, and eventually causing the cushion syndrome. So, there are two main sources of ACTH in the body. First of all are the ACTH secreting pituitary adenoma. And when we are talking about Cushing syndrome caused by this pituitary adenoma, we are talking about Cushing disease specifically. So remember, Cushing disease only refers to Cushing syndrome when it is caused by a ACTH secreting pituitary adenoma. And the other source of ACTH in the body are ectopic ACTH. So for example, some cancers in the body, such as small cell lung cancers or renal cell carcinoma, have the ability to produce ACTH. And this ACTH behaves just like the ACTH from the pituitary gland, which will also stimulate the adrenal, uh, adrenal cortex to produce the cortisols. So these are the etiologies of Cushing syndrome. Now let's talk a bit about the manifestation and pathogenesis. So first of all, uh, you need to know is cortisol is uh, has a systemic effect. So we can expect we can be expected to see the symptoms of Cushing syndromes in many places. Let's all start with the most obvious one, the skin. So we may be able to see ecchymosis, purple striae, which is also known as uh, straight, uh, stretch marks, which is these things you can see here. And then also there's delay healing, and all these theories can be explained by the effect of cortisol on the fibroblast. So cortisol inhibits fibroblast action, and therefore decreasing fibroblast collo uh, collagen production. And collagen is the main structural protein in the skin and the vessels. So when there is decreased collagen, the inte structural integrity of the vessels and the skin will weaken, which causes the ecchymosis due to blood leaking out of the uh, vessels. And purple strain is due to weakening of the skin leading to stretch marks and delay healing because collagen is very important in healing. And the other causes are hirsutism, acne, facial flushing, and hyperpigmentation. So hyperpigmentation can only be seen in secondary Cushing syndrome. And the reason is ACTH shares the same precursor molecule as the melanocyte stimulating hormone. So every time when ACTH is produced, melanocyte stimulating hormone is also released. And like I suggested, melanocyte stimulating hormone stimulates the melanocyte to produce melanin. And melanin is what causes the hyperpigmentation that is seen in secondary Cushing syndrome. It is not seen in primary Cushing syndrome because ACTH level is suppressed in primary Cushing syndrome. So that's the skin manifestation. Next, we have the musculoskeletal. 
uh, manifestation. So the first are osteoporosis and avascular necrosis of the bone, as well as muscle atrophy. So first of all, osteoporosis is because cortisol inhibits osteoblast action and actually increases osteoclast activity, leading to increased bone reabsorption, causing the osteoporosis. And next is muscle atrophy. So cortisol has a catabolic effect on protein metabolism, meaning it will break down protein into amino acids. And where uh, and in muscles, there are a lot of proteins, so we can expect to see muscle breakdown leading to muscle atrophy in Cushing syndrome. So next we have the neuropsychological symptoms such as lethargy, depression, sleep disturbances, and psychosis. The exact pathogenesis for these manifestations, manifestations are not clear just yet. And the other really obvious uh, manifestations are the metabolic symptoms. So we can have hyperglycemia and diabetes because, cushion, uh, because cortisol increases blood glucose level and increases insulin sensitive resistance increase insulin resistance and for re these reasons we can call cortisol as diabetogenic and then next are the central obesity moon faces and buffalo humps so all these three symptoms can be explained by the effect of cortisol's on the fat and lipids so cortisol stimulates lipolysis and as a result of lipolysis all those free fatty acids will relocate to the central part of the body. So oftentimes this is the central obesity, which is also known as the abdominal obesity. In this here, you can see the distended abdomen. That is the abdominal or uh, central obesity. And then our second are the moon faces. So if you can see the pictures here, the faces are relatively swollen. It's also because of the fat building up in the face. And buffalo hump refers to least mass on the back of the shoulder. And these are also caused by the fat, uh, free fatty acid deposit over the shoulder. Next, we have the endocrine manifestations. So first, we have amenorrhea and decreased libido. And this is all because cortisol inhibits FSH and LH secretion, leading to uh, hypo relative hypogonadism, and which is what causes the amenorrhea and decreased libido. And next are the other non-classifiable symptoms. So for example, there can be secondary hypertension because uh, cortisol is one of the stress hormones and it behaves just a little bit like the sympathetic nervous system. So it will also trigger vasoconstriction, which leads to secondary hypertension. Next is also immunosuppression. So cortisol, um, cortisol affects many uh, immune cells, especially neutrophils. It decreases neutrophil marginalization and extravasation into the tissues. Therefore, we can expect to see neutrophilia in Cushing syndrome because the neutrophils are not able to leave the vessels. And next are the cataracts and peptic ulcer diseases. So this concludes pretty much most of the symptoms for Cushing syndrome. In terms of diagnosis and treatment, I will just uh, do a very brief review over it. So we can diagnose Cushing syndromes by measuring the serum and urine cortisols and ACTH level. And once we have confirmed there is an elevated cortisol level, we can do an MRI or CT of the head and abdomen, especially adrenal gland, to identify where is the source of uh, cortisol or ACTH coming from. Is it from the pituitary or is it from the adrenal gland? And the treatments will largely depend on the etiology. So if we have iatrogenic Cushing syndrome, we can use glucocorticoid sparing agents. So we use other immunosuppressants that is not glucocorticoids. And um, and if there and if the Cushing syndrome is caused by primary and secondary causes, we can remove the source of ACTH. For example, we can remove the adrenal gland or the pituitary adenomala. So these are the diagnoses and treatments. And which also concludes my presentation today on the Cushing syndrome. And before we end these sessions, there are two questions I want you to think about. What is the difference between Cushing disease and Cushing syndrome? And second, what is the cause of hyperpigmentation seen in secondary Cushing syndrome? So thank you everyone and have a good day.